I did notice that. Oh man. Me and you went back and back and forth, didn't we, buddy? The thing about bed fishing is they can win every cast but one. And when they lose, you got them. And there's nothing they can do about it. You just have them. But he won more than me. I just won the last one. All right, we're going to go over the five best baits for summer, or at least the five that I leave tied on literally the entire summer. Number one is going to be the dang Spro Popping Frog. That's my favorite frog by far. And in the summers, whenever you can catch some really, really big ones on it, and you can actually get a lot of bites on it. So it's pretty good in late spring. It's good pre-spawn, during the spawn, late spring, all that type of stuff. But I really, really like that Spro Popping Frog all summer long. I throw it on a seven foot six heavy, fast Envy, 13 fishing Envy rod, eight to one gear ratio, inception reel. That's gonna be on 50 to 60 pound Sunline, either X Plasma or SX1. If I'm in super heavy cover, I really like that X Plasma. It's got a coating on top of it. It's got the X Plasma coating on top of it. And that makes it extremely abrasion resistant whenever you're, there's one on bed. Extremely abrasion resistant whenever you're throwing it in some really heavy cover like wood, around, you know, under docks, all that type of stuff. That X Plasma coating just really helps out a ton. If I'm fishing more open water and I just put brand new braid on, a lot of times I'll use the SX1 because it, whenever it's brand new, it's such a softer braid that it casts really, really well whenever it's brand new. So that's my favorite thing to throw all summer long. And if y'all have seen my videos before, y'all probably know that that's my favorite bait to throw. But another really, really good one is a swim jig. Leave it on the front deck literally all summer. Might change between white, black and blue, you know a bluegill color a green pumpkin color all that type of stuff i go through kind of the gauntlet on colors just depending on what kind of baits in the area if i see a lot of shad if it's dirty i still like a black and blue around bluegill I like a black and blue all that type of stuff affects it obviously if it's clear i'm going to go with like a green pumpkin or some type of bluegill color try to match those same kind of deal 50 pound SX1 typically and super heavy cover, big grass mats, all that type of stuff. I will go to the X Plasma. That's going to be on a seven foot three medium heavy extra fast or a seven foot three heavy fast rod. Throw it on the Envy also. Same kind of setup, eight to one gear ratio, inception reel. That's my two kind of power fishing deals that I really like to leave on the front deck all the time. So if I'm trying to catch a big one on the Apex, my favorite trailer is the Lunchbug Crawl from 13. I've been throwing another one that's coming out very soon from 13 that is good for all around. But if I'm kind of trying to catch a big one, throwing a big swim jig, a big profile, I use that Lunchbug Crawl. It's just a really big crawl style and it doesn't have quite as aggressive of a flap as some of the other crawl baits. So whenever it's a little bit warmer, you can reel it a little bit faster. It doesn't create quite as much drag on the water but still has that big profile and still does generate quite a bit of action so my favorite swim jig setup for catching big bites is that one another one that never go fishing without no matter what time of year it is but it also plays really well in the summer is a flipping rod you know it's going to be fluorocarbon for flipping in wood flipping in sparse grass i flip it in some thick grass sometimes but i like braid for that but it's going to be a seven foot six heavy envy rod also and it's going to be 22 pound sunline shooter for the most part. Fast gear ratio reel, eight to one, half ounce tungsten, untamed tungsten, five volt gamakatsu straight shank flipping hook, and I flip the Invader, which I flip a lot now. Got on it really good last summer. Was catching a lot of fish on the Invader. It's a little more subtle whenever it's, you know, you're flipping in that cover, it really slides through really well, and it's a more subtle presentation. You know, I do still throw some beaver baits and stuff like that from time to time, you know, still mix it in some but the invader is still a really really good one whenever it's a little bit tougher to get a bite in the summer or late summer whenever the bait and the bluegill have just spawned they're a little bit smaller i just feel like it gets more bites another really good one in the summer is a shaky head you know you got to fish offshore a pretty good bit in the summer you fish a little bit deeper there's one on bed right there fish a little bit deeper in the summer fish some brush fish some offshore rocks some deep points all that type of stuff in the summer really plays big time and 
I like that shaky head for it. We've got one coming out very, very soon from Untamed. Shaky head we put a lot of work into. We try to do things a lot differently on this shaky head, try to make it look more unique. But throw that with like a, just a six inch straight tail worm is gonna be the standard. Obviously, you change it based on kind of where you're at or if the water's stained or any of that type of stuff. You can make some changes to it, but for the most part, do throw that on you know, with like the 13 fishing BFF. And I like that BFF because it has kind of like a spade tail on it. It has a ton of action in the water. Been throwing it weightless, been throwing it wacky rig, been throwing shaky head, been throwing a lot of different ways and catch them really good on that BFF. So something natural, green pumpkin, collard green, or you can go to a, like a boss nugget, chili lime, red chili, whatever it's called. It's like a red bug color. All that type of stuff really plays in the summertime. I don't know why, but they really like that red bug or red hot chili from 13. They like those kind of colors in the summer a ton. Another good one that you have to have, because sometimes you got to fish offshore, it's a little bit tougher. Spotted bass, just eat this thing, smallmouth, eat this thing, no matter where you're at in the summer. I have a drop shot, unfortunately, tied on or really close in the rod box if not laying on the front deck. Kind of the same thing, you can fish it anywhere. You can pitch it to dock pilings. You can take it out and you know throw it over brush, you can throw it over rock piles, long points, all that type of stuff. I throw the drop shot and the shaky head on the exact same rod. Seven foot three, medium, fast, envy rod, high speed, 2500 reel, sp spinning reel. The high speed one I can get, I like the 2500 because it's a little bit lighter. Feel like it's a little bit more manageable i feel like when i cast the 2500 size reel i can just like manage the line a little bit better on the spool seems like the 3000 size reel it just i don't know it just seems a little bit harder to be super precise with it but you can't throw a 2500 size reel quite as far but that's kind of my setup for a old shaking head and the drop shot so those are those are probably five that i'm gonna say no matter where you're at in the country you can catch a bass on it hopefully They'll be a little bigger than this one, but you never know. Sometimes they ain't. I do like to uh, mix it up a lot in the summer. When I fish tournaments in the summer, it's very often that I fish shallow and deep in the same exact day. So that's kind of why I'm picking baits that I can, you know, throw shallow and throw deep, get big bites shallow, get big bites deep, all that type of stuff. I mix that in a ton, and that's kind of how I fish in the summertime. Now, obviously, if you're on, you know, the Tennessee River in the summer, you might want to throw a big crankbait or you know like the spur little john dd like the big one that kind of stuff really catches them good in the summer but for me those are just some general baits that are going to get you bites no matter where you're at in the summertime so and you might be on a lake that has a lot more rock and you don't want a frog and you put on a buzz bait or something similar but that's kind of going to be a guideline that's not going to be a copy and paste on every single lake type of a deal but it's five you can get bit on anywhere so gotta get me another worm okay give me your buzz bait grab a worm real quick all right so buzz baits one of the tried and true baits i mean everybody has caught big ones on a buzz bait everybody's caught a bunch of fish on a buzz bait it's just a great way to get some bites i mean it really does generate a ton of bites my setup for a buzz bait is going to be a seven foot three medium heavy fast i don't really like an extra fast for a buzz bait and i've played with it a few different times of me actually th throwing like a seven foot three heavy cranking rod on a buzz bait because i do like to throw braid on the buzz bait 50 pound braid and 99.9 .9 percent of the time i'm gonna throw it on a, me on a seven three medium heavy fast i like the braids i can make a lot longer casts if I get something on the blade or something, I want to snap it off. I just can a lot easier with the braid. I feel like if I want to twitch the rod and give it a little uh, flutter or squirt some water out or whatever, I feel like I can do that a whole lot easier with braid than I can with mono or fluorocarbon. Some people use fluorocarbon. I, I know they do. That, that's fine. That's all good. But I just like the braid. I don't lose a lot on it, but I don't set the hook very hard on the buzz bait. Whenever I see one come up and bite it, I try try this does not mean i do it every time to just lean into them against the way they bit it so if i knew the fish came from the left and ate it going came from the right and ate it going to the left i'm just going to try to lean back across the way that he bit it and see if i can't you know just bury that hook with that braid because the buzz bait has an exposed hook and that's kind of my setup of why i throw it on braid now 
I almost always throw a soft plastic on a buzz bait. I have gotten back into recently throwing a skirt on one. I didn't throw a skirt on one for years and years and years and years, just cause you can skip it. And I feel like they eat it a little bit better. You know, whenever you've got, I feel like they eat it a little bit better whenever you've got that plastic on there. So a lot of times I do throw the plastic, but I have got back throwing a skirt a little bit recently. I feel like they eat it pretty good with the skirt also. I just feel like I lose a little bit more on it. So that's my basic buzz bait setup. Gonna be a 7.3 to one gear ratio reel. And I'll pick it up as soon as that water temp gets over 50 degrees in the spring. That's whenever I pretty much start throwing it. The bite doesn't really happen though till post spawn. Shad start spawning, bluegill get up on the bank. Then the buzz bait bite really gets good. And that's when I really am gonna wanna throw it. Water clarity can be all different types of water clarity i just will if i'm fishing extremely clear water i mean extremely clear water i'll kind of downsize my blade you know if i'm fishing really muddy water i'll kind of want a big blade that can really really slow and make a lot of disturbance a lot of vibration a lot of commotion on the surface so it's kind of my buzz bait setup pretty simple so whopper plopper style bait is going to be plopper style bait whatever you want to call it that's gonna be a seven foot six, medium heavy, unless I'm throwing the absolute really, really big one. For the most part, it's gonna be a seven foot three, medium heavy, or seven foot six, medium heavy. I like the Omen for that one, because that Omen loads a little bit deeper. It's not quite as fast of a rod as the Envy series is. So I really like it for the, for the big treble hook style baits that I throw on heavy line. I really like that rod to load a little bit better. So that's the one that I throw, you know, the whopper plopper on, the, some of the bigger swim baits I throw, the medium sized swim baits, throw a lot of that stuff on the Omen. But the whopper plopper is gonna be on 50 pound braid. If I'm throwing the small one, may go down to 30 pound braid. For the most part, it's gonna be 50 pound braid and a 7.3 to one gear ratio reel, a rod that loads a little bit better. And I throw it very similarly to a buzz bait. When that water temp gets over 50, I know they're gonna start eating that bait. They're gonna start eating that top water really good and that's whenever I'll pick it up and start throwing it. Another thing with that one is you just, you don't wanna set the hook. You wanna lean into them, kinda of just reel into them, hook them with those big treble hooks and then grind them to the boat and swing them, typically. That's what I do a lot of times. I don't like, I don't like playing fish with treble hooks with a bait as heavy as the whopper plopper at the boat. If they're coming and I can swing them, I'm gonna swing them. If I've got somebody with a net, I'll net them, but we don't have the luxury of using a net on the Elite Series, so if they're coming with them treble hooks, I just typically swing them, and that's gonna be one of those things I keep simple too. You know, just, that's the rod I throw it on. I don't, you know, change colors, get crazy with colors, none of the stuff like that. You just throw that thing down the bank. The reason I pick a whopper plopper over a buzz bait, if you're on lakes with a lot of rock, pole timber, stuff where you don't have to skip a lot, I really like that plopper style bait. If I'm skipping it, throwing it through heavier cover. It's gonna get around grass a good bit. That's when I'll go to the buzz bait just based on kind of the cover that I'm fishing. So that's the whopper plopper. All right, that's my take on I guess about seven different baits that are really good whenever it gets hot. It ain't quite summertime yet. We're still seeing some spawners, but it's mostly post spawn down here in the Southeast. Let me know, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what baits you cannot go fishing with in the summertime. If you have a different ones than me, let me know why you can't go fish without that bait, where you throw that bait, that type of stuff. I wanna see if y'all do something differently than I do. I read all the comments, always do. But also leave me a request if y'all got any type of video you think would be cool to see in the summertime, to see this time of year or whatever. We're kinda just trying to film, get back on the pattern of filming a ton. We've been kinda having a little off time, chilling a little bit, fishing a lot. Leave us some requests down below and then let me know how you differ for my summertime five to seven baits. So appreciate y'all guys watching. We'll see y'all in the next one.